she wants to go down. That is so not cool. <laughs> I wasn't sure. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you not. I. Let's start talking about rational equations. <coughs> rational is just the fancy word for something that can be expressed as a what? Yeah, fraction. fraction right? uh, look at this. What do you see at the very beginning here? <coughs> ratio. You, oh, I see radio. <laughs> ratio is something that you express using a fraction. Now, when we solve these guys, since they are fractions, it's all about how do I get rid of the fractions? Because I don't like the fractions. Okay. So I've got fractions here, and I don't like them. How do I get rid of them? <coughs> Will you find a common denominator or multiply everything times that? Right? There's a lot of different ways of doing this. Now, look at these denominators. Does 10 or do, do 10 and 3x minus 5 have anything in common? No. So what you could do is this. What factor is missing here? We're missing a 3x minus 5. And what factor is missing here? We're missing 10. Okay. Excuse me. Forgot about that guy. So if I'm making this adjustment, what I put in the top, I have to put in the bottom, and what I put in the bottom, I have to put in the top. Do I have the same denominators all the way across here now? Yeah. Yes. Since I do have an equation, since I have an equation, I can set the numerators equal to each other. So that means I could just write this. 3x minus 5 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 7 times 10. I don't have denominators to worry about now. I just have to multiply this out, solve this, do whatever I need to. So what will I do? Let's foil this. So when I foil, what do I have? 6x squared 6x plus 3x. 6x squared <coughs> plus 3x. Inside is a minus 10x. And the last term is 5. And on the other side of the equation, we have 70. Do you all agree? Now, before I go and I try to solve this, I need to move the 70 over, right? I know this is quadratic, so let's get everything together. So I get 6x squared, combined like terms, and I have what? <coughs> Minus 7x. <coughs> Minus 75 is equal to 0. First thought that should go through your mind, which I'm sure it goes through everybody's mind, but not in the right way is WTF, will this factor? What do you think? Is it worth a try? Let's go for it, guys. Totally awesome. Now, when I break this down, i got to think about what my factors are. Too bad I don't have a pencil that works. The factors for 6 are 1 and 6, or 2 and 3. The factors for 75. You guys have 1 and 75, right? 5 goes in 15 times, and 3 goes in 25 times, right? Now, think about the tricks I've taught you with factoring. Do you have, what about 5 and 15? They are out. Why are they out? They have a common factor of 5 that does not go into 7. These guys have a common factor of 5 that does not go into 7, so you may not use that. Now, what is your heart telling you? Should you use the 1 and 75 or the 3 and 25? 3 and 25. 3 and 25. You need smaller numbers to get this smaller number. If you use 1 and 75, you're going to exceed the 7 all the time. So I'm going to use 3 and <coughs> 25. What do you know about your signs? One positive, one negative, but maybe we don't know exactly which one's going to be positive or negative. We may be thinking that which number is going to be negative. Maybe the 25. So let's start there. Let's see if that works out. Now let's think about your factors for 6. You've got 2 and 3 or 1 and 6. What should you use? 1 and 6? If I try to use 1 and 6, yeah. there's a contradiction if I'm not careful. What's the contradiction here? 3 and 6. The 6 can't go with the 3, can it? 
Say again? And, well, it's that order, 1 and 6, 6 by 18. Okay. Right, but I'm, I'm saying but if I put the 6 here, 6 with the 3 gives me a common factor, which gives me a contradiction because there was no common factor to begin with. So let's try the 6x here and the x here. Does that work? Take a quick little jog here. We get positive 18x in the middle. And on the outside, we get a negative 25x. So all together is negative 7x. Take a moment to check that to make sure your factorization is correct. Now, that's just the factorization. I want the solutions, though. What solution do I get from x plus 3? <coughs> <coughs> x equals negative 3. <coughs> x equals negative 3 or what? x equals 25 over 6. Now, before you go and box these, I do need to make sure that you are aware of something in this original problem. You must be aware of your restricted values. Remember, your restricted values are those values that would make your denominator equal to 0. Do you have anything that would make your original denominators equal 0? Does 10 equal 0? No. But here, 5 thirds is a restricted value. x can never equal that, because if you had to check 5 thirds, you would come up with something that is what? Zero. Undefined. You have an expression that's undefined, and then that solution would be called extraneous. Remember that fancy word? Maybe you don't. Maybe you do now. So do we have a solution that's 5 thirds? We don't, so both of these guys should be legitimate answers. Of course, how do we know for certain? If I'm so kind, I might let you use what? Calculator. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see what happens. Now, there's, two, there's a lot of ways we have of doing this. We can just check our solutions just the way they are, or we can use the solver feature. I'm going to go ahead and use the solver feature because we've already done the work. So remember, the solver is under math. Now, typing in this equation is going to be, like we were talking about earlier, be very careful how you use your equal signs, right? Or in your parentheses. How do I get to the solver? <coughs> you press math, then press up, and it's the very last option there. So I have 2x plus 1, that whole quantity, divided by 10. But I need to move this fraction over, right? So I'm going to subtract 7 divided by 3x minus 5. You can't uh, do the equal sign when you're doing this method? If you're using the solver, notice how it's set equal to 0. So the equation, okay. the equal sign is already spoken for. Yes. Once I have this in, what do I do? Alpha enter. Well, we can't do the alpha enter. We can't do the solve yet until I get to where I'm guessing a value here. No, that's what I pressed to get there. Okay. Now, if I do, if I check negative 10 and I solve to negative 10, I get negative 2.9 repeating, which is essentially the same as what? I get negative 3. Yes. That's where you're losing. What value? Where are you getting negative 10? I choose negative 10 and 10, so I get something that's on the left and on the right side. So when it finds the closest one, it should be coming into that for most of these guys. Okay? Because here's the thing. If I just do this, if I do 0 and I solve what's the solution closest to 0, it tells me negative 3. Well, how do I know where the other solution is? You know, I'll, I'll try... Let me try negative 2 and solve what's the closest one to negative 2. I still get negative 3. So if I'm looking at the number line, here's 0. I've got a solution that's negative 3, and I've got one that's 25 over 6. 0 is closer to negative 3 than it is 25 over 6. So if I will test and if I will check what's closest to negative 10, what's closest to positive 10, the first one this guy finds is negative 3. The first one that finds is 
25 over 6. Now, is that always going to work? No. But for a, a lot of the problems that we encounter, <coughs> that's going to work out very nicely for us. If so you put in, I mean, positive 100 or negative 100, it's still going to come up with the same answer. It's just it will, but it may take, it, may take the calculator longer, longer. to find sure. that. And the further away it is, you saw that when I did negative 10, we'll just do 100, yeah. it gave me this guy, right? right. If I do negative 100, well, it gives me negative 3. Well, who knows how it works. <laughs> it's, all, it's, just, it's just a big mystery. I don't know. Well, let's, if I, I if we, put mine in wrong. If we check 10, I get 4.16 repeating. How do I make that into a, an answer that's appropriate? Quit out of this. X. Math. And convert that to a fraction. I get 25 over 6. Now, if you're not getting the same thing that I'm getting, make sure that you do have your equation typed correctly using your parentheses. If you don't use your parentheses correctly, you're not going to get my answer. So you have to be very, very careful about that.